Welcome back to Bluff City Media. My name is Kenny Stubblefield. I am the lead digital content creator for Bluff City Media. And today's an exciting day for our first ever podcast, first ever player interview, man. I got the OG on the team. I got Draco. I got DeAndre Williams with me. What's going on, DeAndre? Oh, what's going on, my man? Glad to have me on here, man. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to be on here. Listen, I can't think of anybody better to have on our first podcast than to have you on it, man. You are, um, you know, for the last three years that you've been playing for the Tigers, man, it is clear to everybody that watches you, watches the team, that you are the lifeblood of the team. You're the heart and soul of the team. And, um, yeah, man, I'm excited to have you on in your final year here at Memphis, man. It's a sad year for all of us, but expecting <laughs> big things out of you, man. So how are you feeling so far this year, man? You're one game in, um, played Vandy last Tuesday. How are you feeling so far? Uh, man, I'm feeling great um, as far as health-wise. Um, feeling real great. I got to still stay on top of my eating habits and get my proper treatment. But uh, as far as basketball, um, it, it's going great right now. First start, first win, uh, start of the season. So um, I'm excited, man. I, I think we're going to do big things this year and um, looking forward to it. So I ask people all the time, you know, when you like what stats do people look at and i know stats don't tell the whole story of a game no mm -hmm. everybody knows that anybody that tries to look at stats only and try to, try to tell you what happened in a game just that doesn't make sense to me but um for you as you came out of that game against vandy um obviously it was a a big win um in nashville first game of the year against the sec opponent mm -hmm. uh what were some of the things that you were looking at at the end of the game that you said th this is this is what caused us to be able to be successful in our first game of the year? Um, I, I just felt that uh, that grit and grind and that 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 uh, motivation wanting to win um, from my team and um, just being in the hostile environment it, it challenged you to um, to be able to compete. So uh, we was always ready for the challenge because. We challenged each other in practice each and every day on, you know, just competing and, and getting each other better. So um, just to go out and, you know, play another opponent, man, I just I knew we had the firepower as a team to go out there and execute. And, and that's what we did. We had the city in the stands. That's what really gave us a lot of motivation, too, as well, just to see a lot of blue in there. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it was, it was a fun start. I mean, you had a Let's Go Tigers chant in the middle of the – Vanderbilt Stadium. I don't even know what the arena is called, but the Vanderbilt home floor, there was yeah. a sea of blue fans screaming, "Let's go Tigers!" Chant, "Let's go Tigers!" I mean, that's got to be pretty cool, man. That that you guys had a contingent of Tiger fans in Nashville with y'all. Oh, definitely, man. That was that was like our six man for real. They, you know, they're cheering us on, um, and just to see them in there in that hostile environment and have our back, uh, we made sure we went out there and had their back. Absolutely, man. So obviously the Tigers won that game 76 to 67 against Vanderbilt. Um, you came in, man. I just want to go through your stat line real quick. Um, mm -hmm. there's more to your game than just a stat line, but you had 17 points, seven eleven from the field, uh, one or two from threes, two for two from the free throw line, two steals, three assists, five rebounds. I mean, just filled the stat sheet during that game. Mm -hmm. Can I just point out one stat though that really stuck out to me? Talk to me. <laughs> Three fouls, baby. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> definitely. I guess that's for all the fans. They like that for sure. They definitely like that, right? Like, <laughs> hey, DeAndre didn't DeAndre wasn't in foul trouble the whole game, which is there's a level of aggressiveness. And and I'll be frank with you, man. Like, I'm not a massive fan. I know you can't say this, but I'm not a massive fan of college referees. I think that they a lot of times anticipate foul calls instead of instead of calling the actual play. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is a that's a that's a something that has been a part of of your time here where there'll there'll be some games where within a minute or two in the first half, you'll pick up two fouls and then it's, we got to manage your minutes, but that was not the case against Vanderbilt, man. And you ended up playing 33 minutes in that game and obviously yeah. filled the stat sheet. Like, was that, was that something, is that something that has been brought to your attention throughout this off season of like, Hey, this is how we can move and make sure that we're not picking up fouls early on. Definitely. Uh, that's a new start for me. Um, I knew for the past two years, I was, um, 
you know, foul trouble prone. So um, that's just me, you know, going back to the drawing board, thinking over, doing my research, doing my film, watching my film, and just making sure I do better, you know, and go in games and be more poised because I know how they call it. It can be a little close sometimes. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't like showing the referee up because they, they give them the ability to give me a, another bad call. So I want to kind of just show the respect to them and, you know, great call ref, even if it's a good call or not. And then, you know, keep my poise within the game. So I guess that's what I did. So what did you notice on your game film as you're looking through that kind of stuff, um, looking at, you know, maybe some of the problem areas where you were picking up fouls? Was it that maybe we weren't moving our feet enough? We weren't standing straight up? We weren't, you know, parallel playing? We weren't – what was it that you noticed and, and that you came into this season going, these are – this is one thing that I can change – to be able to make sure that that I'm not getting in foul trouble? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, just um, when I'm playing defense, sometimes I'm, I feel like I'm a, a great defender. So um, I expect uh, the offense not to score on me most of the time. So um, I try to play real aggressive with them. So now I'm really just more fundamentally sound on, you know, whenever a guy drive, chest them up, mm -hmm. put my hands high, not try not to, you know, uh, be too aggressive, but at the same time playing great defense. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah. No, that's good, man. So obviously the, you guys had, it was just a different lineup, a different look this, this game, you know, uh, coach Penny brought out, I think he played nine players this game. Um, the the ninth person off the or not ninth person off the bench, but in terms of minutes was uh KO had six minutes in the first half, and y'all ran with eight pretty much the entire game. And that starting lineup took a majority of the of the of the minutes. Tell me about that. Like, did you did you find your did y'all find yourselves a starting five, especially be able to like kind of catch a rhythm and like flow in a in a way that was that, that kind of helps sustain throughout the game. Is that is that something that you noticed in terms of the longevity of your um of your, your the time period that you were out there on the floor? Definitely. Um I, I felt the veterans who was, you know, kind of just ready to play, you know, and we know we have that role as veterans to go out there and make plays for our team anyway. So um it was that type of game, hostile environment, and we knew our veterans had to step up and, and we all stepped up. So it was that type of game. Absolutely. So you guys are, I mean, the, you know, you're in the front court with Malcolm and and Chandler and Ko and, uh, yeah, you guys have a, you and Malcolm especially have played with each other for so long, but mm -hmm. you've integrated some new players into the into the front court, mm -hmm. and I know that you know there's always a level of trying to when you've integrated new players into the lineup into the team, there's a, a, a trying to figure each other out personally off the floor, things like that. But in terms of on the floor play, how do you, as the, as you and Malcolm, especially as the veterans on the team in the front court, what does that look like in terms of integrating your play styles with your other front court um, teammates? You know, you and Malcolm playing more on the floor together than you ever have you and Chandler playing KO being out there. Have you, what has been the process of you guys in the front court trying to say, okay, this is what, this is how we know how to play off each other, getting used to that? Uh, yeah, basically it, it starts in practice. Um, us making a lot of mistakes in practice. That's what you get the mistakes out at in practice and playing against each other, seeing each other weaknesses, weaknesses and uh, each other's strengths. So um, just being able to play with those guys and against those guys every single day, um, you can't help but build that chemistry up. And um, the games are the games, you know. Um, whenever they come, the lights on, fans there, then we're we ready to play. So we know we, we got each other back um, 100% most of the time. So we just know whatever we need to do um, to pull it out and play together and make each other look good, we're willing to do that. Man, how excited were you to see um... – Kendrick and Alex out there on the floor together for an extended period of time. I think a lot of questions were, you know, kind of in the, in the, in the off season, people were asking questions about, you know, what, what would a lineup of Kendrick Davis and Alex Lomax look like together? Because they're both on the smaller side of things in terms of height, but everybody knows Alex in the way that he plays defense. Everybody knows Kendrick in the way that he can, you know, 
really manipulate a, a manipulate manipulate the offense and mm-hmm. um, get shots off and lead the team in that regard with mm-hmm. the ball in his hands. As you have looked at game film since Tuesday, what was your thoughts on uh, seeing those two guys together? Oh, it was amazing, man! Just to see those those are great guards. You know, one of the top guards in, in college basketball for sure, in, in my opinion, um, because they they both they they try to put uh, categories on e- on each other like the fans, but they they both do everything. You know, everything. they assist, they they score, they play defense. They they just great guards that you need on your team to be able to lead you. And um, we're, we're just very grateful to have those two together on the same team. Um, it's it's going to be real dominant um, the whole season. Is it weird to think that the city of Memphis, its NBA program, has probably, as John ja Morant said this week, where does your backcourt stand in the NBA? He says top two, not two. Him <laughs> and Desmond Bain – are one of the best backcourts in the whole entire country. Mm-hmm. And then on the Tiger side, you got Alex and you got Kendrick, man. Like that is a – that is two dominant backcourts playing for two different teams in the city. Yeah. No, that's electric, man, just to have that parallel um, in the NBA and college. Um, it's, it's very electric. And that's when we see that and we see, you know, John Moran, Desmond Bain representing in the city. Um, that's what we do here at the Memphis Tigers, and that's what it's all about. Um, we we the city's team, so we're gonna go out there, go out there and rip, you know, the best the best way we can. So y'all started off hot this year, seventy six to sixty seven against Vanderbilt. Tough road game. I mean, I think this is the first time since Penny has been the head coach that you know two straight games and uh you know on the on the road against quality opponents, man, like Vanderbilt yeah. and then St. Louis on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think coming out of this Vanderbilt game going into the St. Louis game? What are you hoping to learn about your team coming out of these two next or these two first road games of the year? Um, just our um uh, our poise, um, our consistency um through throughout the season. And we know every game is gonna be, you know, a different test. And I just want to see how resilient my team is so um, that when we come in games that we always ready to play and we don't overlook anybody. Um, and we just, we just ready to dominate really honestly, every single game and chance we get on the court. So I just want to see the consistency on, you know, how long we can, we stand this um, throughout the whole season. I mean, y'all, Y'all's first part of the schedule, y'all are coming out hot, man. Like, I think I think Tiger fans and the whole world, college basketball world, will know exactly who y'all are very quickly, man. Like, you've got – I mean, you got Vanderbilt. You got Vanderbilt this past uh, – was it Monday? I keep saying Tuesday. It was Monday night. Then you mm-hmm. got St. Louis on Tuesday coming back to play your first home game against VCU, and then it's – then Seton Hall, and then y'all dip out to the ESPN Invitational. That's – I mean, y'all, and there's some great teams in there. I mean, y'all are going to know who you are very, very quickly. Definitely. Uh, like, like I said, we got a lot of tests that's coming up that's going to test us as a team and as a group um, to see if we can really withstand um, all the positivity and knock out all the negativity that, you know, people that have been saying about us. Um, we don't look at rankers or anything like that. So, um, like I said, just staying consistent and poised, and I, I think we're going to be able to have a great year. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, listen, thank you for coming on with me, man. I'm excited. You played an, an amazing game. Uh, no surprise. You know, mm-hmm. led the team on, you know, in pretty much every category. Um, and, DeAndre, I'm excited to have you back here in Memphis this this next year or this past year, and, and I think – it's it's super interesting when you uh, when you have a new team with a bunch of new players um, to be able to talk to some of the, con- the the guys that have been around the program for a minute and and figure out kind of what's going on behind the scenes and and how the team is gelling and the team I mean obviously coming out with a win was a huge deal but y'all just looked different in that game it looked like a it looked like it, there was never really any doubt about what was going to happen that game. And and I think that's a a welcome um, development for Tiger fans across the board, just seeing 
it feels like y'all have a real team this year, man. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely chemistry wise. Um, and it, it felt, even though it looked, it felt um, different and, and great. So uh, that's what I'm saying. It's a lot of positivity coming in and it's, we got a lot of motivation to come in and, you know, make the city proud. So, you know, I'm going to continue to lead and do what I got to do to, you know, help the team. And that's in, in all categories. And that's just what it is. So, you know, we appreciate y'all. We'll go out there and it's for y'all, you know, the city. So that's why we had that motivation and that fire behind it like that. Draco, thank you, man, for coming on. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. No Have problem. A good game in St. Louis, you. man. Traveling to St. Louis, good game on Tuesday, and we'll see you back here next Sunday against VCU in the FedEx Forum. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate you, my man. Anytime. Yeah. <laughs>